Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to another Flutter tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at Firebase authentication inside of Flutter. Specifically, we're going to be looking at how we can authenticate a user through Google and then have them sign into Firebase so that they can access the data. This will work for both Firebase and Firestore. And in this case, we're going to be building on top of the Firestore application that we built in the last tutorial. To get started, we want to bring in the imports that we need. We need to bring in Firebase Auth and then Google Sign In. Firebase Auth is version 0.5.9 and Google Sign In is version 3.0.3. .3. These are the two versions that I will be using today. Now we can come into our Firebase console and we need to make a slight alteration to the actual Android project. If you click on the button here on the right corner and then click settings, you can come in here and you can manipulate the settings of the project. Now you can see that I have this SHA certificate fingerprint written inside of this and this is what you need to add to your project to make the authentication work properly. To generate this certificate you want to open up a console like this. It doesn't matter if you're in your project folder or not. You can do this anywhere inside of the console as long as you have access to the JDK. The console command that you want to run is keytool list v dash alias and then you're referencing your Android debug key and then you need to reference the key store that you're getting it from which will be if you're on Windows located at user profile dot Android debug key store. If you're on Mac or on Linux, I will make sure to leave a link which will show you how to actually execute this command on those two operating systems. The command will ask you for a password and the default password is just Android. And once you actually type in the password, you'll get a little message like this. And the fingerprint that you're looking for is this one, the SHA-1 fingerprint. Just copy that, then click add fingerprint, paste it in here and click save and that will then add the SHA fingerprint to your application. For iOS, you do not need to do anything more than we've already done. So you don't need to add an app ID or an app store ID. You just leave everything as it is. You just need to make sure that you have the bundle ID correct. So now we want to go to the authentication tab. You'll get a window that will ask you to enable it. You just click the button, which will then lead you to this tab, which is the sign in methods tab. You need to set up the provider that you want. And in this case, we just want Google. So you just click on Google, click enable, and then click save. There is one final thing that we want to do inside of our Firebase console, and that is set up the rules so that our cloud Firestore or our cloud Firebase will work properly only if the user is actually authenticated. So you can see these are very basic rules. It just says allow read write if the request has been authenticated and that authentication is not equal to null. So when you build out the actual database, instead of choosing test mode, choose lock mode, and then you can just change this one line here. And I'll also link this little block of code in the description. All right, so now let's jump back into our application. All right, so now let's create a file called API and in here we'll create a class which will serve as our API, which will allow us to sign in a user into Firebase. We need three imports in this file. We want to bring in Firebase auth and we need to bring in Google sign in. We also want to bring in Dart asynchronous because we're going to be communicating with the platform messages and these are all asynchronous. Our class will be called FB API. And inside of this class, we'll create two static variables and then one global variable. The first static variable will be our Firebase auth object. We just want to get the Firebase instance object. And then we want to create a Google sign-in object, which we do by instantiating the Google sign-in object. Then below it, we want to create a Firebase user, which we can associate with this API so that when the user logs in, we have that user and we are consistently feeding that user to the rest of our application. Now let's build a constructor. The constructor will take in a Firebase user and then it will assign that Firebase user to this Firebase user variable. So we just say FB API, take in user and then assign user to this dot Firebase user. Now that we have our constructor, we can create the main method for this API. So this is a static method and it will return a future FB API object, which we'll use our constructor down here. 
We'll call it sign in with Google and it will be asynchronous. We'll get a Google sign in account object by awaiting on Google sign in dot sign in. Then we'll take that Google user and we'll use it to get the authentication information. So we just say Google user dot authentication and we need to await on that and then we're going to put it into a Google sign in authentication object. Now we can get a Firebase user object by calling auth dot sign in with Google and passing in a access token and ID token which comes from the Google auth object that we created above. It's important to note that Firebase authentication makes use of OAuth 2.0 and no point inside of our application are we actually handling the user's password and we don't even have to handle the user's username either. Instead what happens is the user clicks a button and it opens up the Google Play Store or in the case of iOS it opens up a Google application. That Google application signs in the user and it sends a token back to our application which uses that token to verify that the user has been signed in. So now that the user has been signed in, we want to verify that the user email is not equal to null, that the user display name is also not equal to null, and that the actual ID token, which we can get using the get ID token function here, is also not equal to null. Then we can instantiate another Firebase user by calling a method called current user which will get the current user that's logged in and we can check to see that the two user IDs are the same. If any of these assertions fail then the user will not sign in. Now finally we return a new FB API object with the user inside of it and this will then sign in the user. Before we go any further, let's restructure the app a little bit. So I've just taken the two big widgets that were inside of the main.dart file and put them inside of a folder called pages inside of the home.dart file here. So we have our my home page widget here, as well as the Firestore list view widget inside of here. And I've also created this login.dart file as well for our login page. Then inside of our MyApp class, which is the root widget, we want to define the routes for this application, and we also want to point our home widget to our login page widget, which we'll create inside of the login.dart file. So keep in mind that inside of the main.dart file, we have these three imports, which is just the Flutter material, and then the home and login page. Then inside of the home.dart file, we have the Flutter material, import as well as the Cloud Firestore import. Inside of our login page, so the login.dart file, we want to make an import for Flutter material, then we also need our API, and we also want Dart asynchronous. And in here we can create a new stateless widget which we'll call login page, and it will build out an empty scaffold. Inside of this stateless widget we can create a simple function which we'll call login user. This will be the function that actually logs the user into the application. And all we really want to do is pass back a Boolean based on whether or not we get an API object back. So we say final API equals await FB API dot sign in with Google, which is our big function that we created in our API. And then if API does not equal null, we return true. Otherwise we return false. So this will sign in the user and then if it fails, then it will throw back false and we could potentially use this for something else. Now down inside the build function, we'll create our app bar, we'll have the title be sign in and we'll make it centered. Then for our body, we'll have a center widget and then inside of it we'll have a stack widget. And we're doing this just for the sake of aesthetics. I'm going to make an effect that sort of looks like a pane of glass that sits in the middle of our screen and then we'll have our button in the middle of that. Inside of our stack, the first widget will be a center, and inside of the center we'll have a constrained box. The constrained box will be box constraints expanded, and we'll give it a width and height of 250. And then inside of this box, we'll have a container, which will just be colors cyan 100 with a bit of opacity to it. So the opacity is just 0.7, and this will make it look fairly flat. 
So here's what the current login page looks like. You can see we just have this sort of grayish blue square in the middle here. And yeah, it doesn't look that great at the moment, but as we get further into it, it should look a little bit nicer. The next widget inside of our stack will also be a center because we want to have this on top of the other one that we just created. And we'll use what's called a backdrop filter. This is just essentially a filter that we can apply to whatever widget that we're putting inside of it. So in our case, we're going to put a container inside of it with some color and we want to apply a Gaussian filter to this color. To actually get the image filter that we're going to use to alter the color, we need to bring in Dart UI. And because there are some objects inside of Dart UI that sort of intersect with what we have inside of Flutter, we just want to show the image filter object that we're going to use. So here inside of our backdrop filter, we'll call image filter dot blur. And then for Sigma X and Sigma Y, we'll put in 5.0. So we'll blur it in the X and Y direction in the same amount. And then inside of it, we'll have another container with width and height of 250. And then we'll decorate the container. We'll give it some color. Color is gray 100 with some light opacity. So here you can see our new box. It looks a bit more like a pane of glass, which is kind of nice. And actually, we do not need to use the box decoration object in this case. We can just put the color property directly in this like we did with the container up here. And you can see that it looks exactly the same. Now inside of this container, we want to create a column so that we have a text widget that says like login. And then we have our button that the user can push to actually log in. So here we'll create a title that says login to the app. And then we'll give it some text style. We'll give the actual text color of black 54. The font size will be 30.0 and then the font weight will be W600. So here you can see the color is the same as the background. So it looks like the text is made out of impressions which are made into this actual box, which is pretty cool. After our text widget, we'll create a flat button. The color of the button will be black 54 and then we'll have an on pressed, which we'll leave empty for now. Then the text color inside of the button will be white with opacity of 0.5 and then the text will just say sign in. And here you can see our button which looks fairly nice with our text widget. If we want to clean up the spacing of the two widgets, we can add main axis alignment, main axis alignment, space around. And this will make it so that we have a fair amount of space between the two widgets here. For the unpressed event in our button, we want to make it asynchronous. And then we also want to use our login user function. So we get the Boolean out of our login user function. Then we run a temporary operator on that Boolean. If we get back true, then we want to navigate forward to the home page. Otherwise, we will pop a snack bar into the scaffold, which will say wrong email. So now if I pull up our application and I hit sign in, this will then sign us into the application. And you can see here, now we have access to the data in the back. So now we're able to authenticate the user and get them into our application. We want to add a little feature on the home page to show that the user has actually been signed in. So inside of our home.dart file, we'll import Firebase authentication. And then for the floating action bar property of our scaffold, we'll create another stream builder. For this stream builder, we'll point it towards our Firebase auth .instance .current user method, and then we'll convert the actual result of this into a stream. And then what we can do is pass in our build context and then the asynchronous snapshot with the Firebase user inside of it. So now inside of this stream builder, we can do something as simple as this. We can say, okay, create a new floating action bar, give it some elevation. And then inside of the floating action bar, we'll create a circle avatar. And the background image for this circle avatar will be based on the user's photo URL, which we get from calling snapshot.data.photo URL. And this will give us the Gmail gravatar that's attached to the account that's signed in. And we'll give it a radius of 30 so it covers the entire floating action bar. So now you can see, since I'm signed in, we've got the little tensor programming logo, which is attached to the account that I signed in with. 
And if you were to sign in with a different email account, you would see the email accounts logo as well. If we want to make things a little bit more consistent, we can add a simple bottom app bar to our scaffold as well, and then dock the floating action bar at the end by using floating action bar dot location dot end docked. So this just helps with the aesthetics of our application. All right, so that's it for our application. If we come back into our Firebase console, you can see here, if we click on authentication, it shows us what users have signed in, when they signed in, when their account was created for this particular project, and their user user ID. So here I've got my developer email address, the provider that I signed in from, which is just Gmail, and then the signed in and created as well as the user UID. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike the video, then by all means, download it as much as you like. Have a good night.